Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first video in a short series where we're going to put this flight controller here into a model. Now this is the Micro Vector Bundle Kit. Uh, it came from Eagle Tree and I'm a fan of the Eagle Tree Vector. Now I've looked at loads and loads of different flight controllers on the channel and put them in everything from planes, quadcopters, wings, all kinds of stuff. And usually I tend to go for things like Pixhawk or Ardu Pilot powered flight controllers or I'll go for iNav Flight, commonly called iNav. But for a model I've got in recently, I want to use this micro vector because it's really designed from the bottom up to be an FPV system. And because of that, all the settings and everything are available through an on-screen display. The on-screen display is actually vector based and it's also color too. So it's a little bit unusual compared to some of the other flight controller options that are out there, particularly for fixed wing. Now I'm using the micro vector here, which is a lot smaller than the full size vector. So if you are interested in looking at the standard size vector setup, I already have all of those videos on the channel. In fact, these videos are going to form part of that same playlist and all the steps I'm going to go through are pretty much exactly the same as the original vector. The only difference here is because the micro vector is so small, it doesn't have the same servo pins and connections on the side as the full size one does. And that means it's a little bit more involved to wire it in to your aircraft. So whereas with the original vector, it was just a case of plugging things in, this one we are going to have to modify all of these different cables that come in the kit. Because you'll notice that although one end is set up, so you can just plug it into the corresponding input in the micro vector, unfortunately, the other end isn't. So we're gonna to have to make those off. So this is the member of the Vector family that is worthwhile getting if you have limited space, but also if you're handy with a set of crimpers or with a soldering iron, and luckily I am, so we're going to go through it all step by step. Now the key to this is just to really work your way around all of the different cables and make them off one by one and keep testing as we go. Everything I'm going to cover in here is already in the vector manuals itself. So the micro vector, just like the normal vector, has its own manual, which is beautifully detailed. And if you use the search function in whatever PDF reader that you're using to view it, then you can find pretty much whatever it is you're looking for. And most of the questions that you're going to come up with all have full sections in the manual that explain how it all works. So I'm personally going to install it into this ZOHD Dart XL just because the flying with this has been fantastic so far and it's going to easily do 45-50 minutes of flying with the battery that I've got here. And I don't like flying uh, to the edge of line of sight or flying for that long without having some really good failsafe and lots of information in my on-screen display when I'm flying FPV about battery status, position, altitude and all that goodness. And the Vector is absolutely going to give that for me. Now the Vector is relatively easy and simple, straightforward and some really cute things in the way that the software is done. So if you're already a Vector pilot, then you'll know all about that and you'll probably just want to watch these couple of videos for the couple of wrinkles with the Micro Vector. And there aren't that many. The main one is we're going to have to actually create a little servo connection block. I'm going to use a little row of servo pins and actually make the ends off so that I can plug the Elevon servos and the ESC into that. But apart from that, it's going to be reasonably standard stuff. So I'm going to follow more or less this outline over the next couple of videos. Uh, first of all, we're going to plug the micro vector into the computer. You're going to download and install the software and we're going to check that it's all working and that, that it all powers up. It's going to do a, probably a software update as job one. Once I'm happy that it's all working and I always do that with all flight controllers first and that way if something isn't working I can send it all back. Uh, it's very tricky to send things back when you've got stuff soldered into the inside of a plane uh, because you can never tell if it's something you've done that stops it working and neither can the manufacturer. Then we're going to install the power and the receiver. So the power setup is a little bit interesting. 
The way that power set up on here is very similar to the big vector. You have the power brick and you have the cable that goes from the power brick and that powers the micro vector. Now, interestingly, uh, the bigger vector has JST plugs that you use to select whether or not you want to run the camera and video transmitter for your FPV kit on 5 or 12 volts. Uh, with this smaller kit, then it's just a single wire. So out of the power block, you have an orange cable that's going to give you 5 volts, and you have a red cable that's going to give you a regulated 12 volts. All of this is covered in the manual, but I tend to use the little names that's actually on the micro vector itself that actually shows you which is which. I want to run both my camera and my video transmitter from that 12 volt supply. So I'm going to solder both of these red wires onto the 12 volt wire that's coming out of the power pack. And I'm just going to remove the 5 volt wire because that's not going to be used for anything. I don't want lots of extra wires hanging around that I don't need. Now the receiver I'm going to use is exactly the same one that I've been flying the model with. It's uh, X4R and I am going to use the S-Bus out. I'd always recommend using S-Bus with the micro vector, well with any of the vector family actually. The detection of the S-Bus failsafe is fantastic and it makes it so much easier. Now we're only going to need three wires in that case. There's a plus five volts and a ground out of here and we're going to connect the wire that's coming out the aileron channel into the S-Bus out of the receiver. So now we've got those pieces set, then we can go through the configuration outside of the model and let me jump on the computer and we'll just go through a few of the basics just to make sure the basic setup is correct before we go any further. And then next video we'll probably end up coming back and creating the wiring harness for the ESCs and carrying on with this list. So let's jump onto the computer and let's actually go through the settings as per the manual in the Eagle Tree configuration software. Before we go any further, remove any mixes on your radio that you might have. Make sure the outputs look like this. Now, this is going to be the first time plugging the vector in and doing configuration, apart from the initial test quick plug-in. So, updated to the latest version of the software on the PC, plug the vector in, and it'll all burst into life. Now, the first job is going to be flash the firmware. That's in the bottom left-hand corner. And then, once that dialog box comes up, just click on the update button, and away it will go. It'll take a couple of minutes. doesn't give you an awful lot of positive reporting. Just let it finish doing all the pieces, and then it will reboot. Once it's rebooted, then a quick wiggle of the board will let you know that everything is finally working and you can start to relax. Once we know that the board is working and we can see it moving in the screen, next job is selecting the airframe type. I'm just going through all the settings. Uh, we're going to have to power the receiver in a minute, but let's just pick the flying wing, click apply, give us a warning. We're going to have to confirm this when it goes into the plane, but that's fine and make sure you're reading all the warnings as you go through. It's very good at trying to make sure that you don't make a mistake. So back into the summary, and the next thing we're going to do then is to do all of the pieces for the radio and also the failsafe, and that gets rid of an awful lot. Now the receiver isn't powered from the vector itself. It's actually going to be powered from the 5 volts coming in from the ESC when we plug it into the model. So what I'm going to have to do is kind of... Uh, pretend that we have the ESC here. I'm going to use a battery eliminator circuit with 5 volts and pop that onto the receiver. That should power it all up. The receiver is going to flash red because I haven't powered the radio. Let's move this out of the way for a second and turn on the radio with the model with those outputs as I just showed you. So now we're going to click on the radio configuration wizard and we're going to go through each of the steps. Now initially you're just going to answer how it's all connected, how you want it to work. Uh, so we're going to be S bus obviously and how you want things like the failsafe to be set up and that's going to be S bus 2. And then with the radio bound, we're going to go th step through each of these settings. So let me just show the radio. So move each of the controls and click next walk through each individual step. Uh, if you have the outputs in a different order from the ones that I showed in that image, it doesn't matter. This will figure it all out. It just happens to be in the same order if you set it like that as it appears. Now, once you've gone through everything once and it's happy, it'll ask you to turn the radio off. And what it's doing is it's listening for what this failsafe condition is. And this is why SBUS is so cool because it'll automatically figure it out. 
We're going to bring the radio back up, reconnect. It then asks us to confirm some of the stick movements again. And we'll just go through and do this stuff. Doesn't take too long at all. This we may have to redo this when we put this in the plane because the control surfaces might need to be reset. Now we're going to ch check the cruise throttle. I'll have it just under 50% with the cruise, and we're going to select the climb throttle. About there, will be fine. But you can change this later in the software. This is just going to be the default settings. So now that the radio is set up, you'll see that the radio calibration is green, the failsafe stuff is green, and if we move the controls around in the bottom left hand corner, you can see all of the controls moving as well. Now I've kept all of the trims and everything from the plane that I was flying. I've also just kept a note of what the elevon positions needed to be for straight and level flight because we'll eyeball those when we come back. And this is why it can be really handy to make sure that you have flown the plane before you put a vector in. So I can see on my mode switches are working, toward the gain knob, there's the gain knob moving Telemetry around as well. Lost. So Telemetry that is fantastic. Recovered. We're in great shape. So the next part of the build we'll do in the next video, and that is continuing on through this list. We've got an awful lot of the hard work done. There's only a couple more bits of soldering that we need to do before we actually physically fit it into the Dart XL. We're going to have to set up the servo connection so I can plug the Elevons and the ESC into the Vector because the Vector doesn't have those on it already. So a quick little bit of soldering and we'll get that done. Then we're going to have to think about the connections for both the camera in the nose and also the video transmitter in the rear of the craft as well and wire those up too. And then we can put everything into the model and power it up properly for the first time. And that's going to be handy because the first time we power up the vector in the model, it is going to ask us to confirm the kind of vehicle that we're in, just to make sure that we don't accidentally plug a plain model setup into a multicopter or vice versa. And once that's in, then we're going to go through and check the control surface movements. And then once that's sorted, we'll probably have to rerun the calibration for the radio again. And we can do it either through this interface that we've just done, or we can do it through the on-screen display. So join me in the next video where we continue the setup and hopefully we'll have this done in a couple of weeks. And once the vector is all configured, then we can get out to the field and give it a good tryout in the ZOHD Dart XL. And then this will probably become one of my main endurance FPV craft. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.